Um, I have literally never been so excited for the hottest month of the year. But man, July I cannot come fast enough. Hi besties, welcome. I hope you're doing well. Long time no see. I've been down for the count because I have had a visit from Miss Rona and I'm still recovering, but I could not put off filming this any longer because it's almost time for the summer splash festivities to commence. And y'all still don't know what I'm reading yet, which is a travesty and a crime. If you don't know, I have created a summer readathon along with a bunch of other amazing creators who are helping me out called the Summer Splash TBR Bash. The goal is sort of a combination of like knocking out your physical TBR, reading summery vibe books, but also just like reading whatever you want and building community with friends because reading with friends is like the greatest gift that we have. There's like a whole announcement video about it that has everything you need to know if you're curious, but also the place to get all of the info is on our Instagram. There's going to be a giveaway and a fundraiser for the National Network of Abortion Funds. There's going to be movie nights and live streams and just like so much fun stuff is going to go down in July. So definitely follow the Instagram to get all that info. And today I'm going to be coming at you and telling you what books I'm reading for each prompt and then also some recommendations for books for the prompts in case you're stuck. Also, before I forget to tell you, we're going to have a super dope kickoff live stream with a bunch of creators rotating through and talking to you, answering questions, playing games, doing lots of fun stuff. So all of the information for that will be on the Instagram and that will be happening the night of June 31st, Eastern time. But I did just want to address that Roe v. Wade got overturned this week in America. Ultimately, it stripped a lot of people of their bodily autonomy and their right to make decisions about their own bodies. I will be leaving the link to the National Network of Abortion Funds down below. I want to go ahead and jump into my TBR because we've got a lot of a lot of prompts to cover. Um, I have made the potentially idiotic decision to try to clear the bingo board. I know I'm not the only person that's doing this <laughs> um, and to those of you who are going to join me on that journey, Godspeed. You know, I designed it so that you could fill out a row or two rows or even just like do whichever prompts you thought would be exciting because there's really no way to lose this readathon. Everybody who participates wins. But I decided that since I created the prompts, it, it felt right that I fulfill each of them. But considering the fact that I only finished one book in June, <laughs> It's gonna be a disaster. I have been in a reading slump the entire month of June. I'm feeling so excited about Summer Splash and about all these books, so I'm hoping it will just completely lift me out of that slump and reignite my Goodreads reading challenge. We'll see if I get to all of them. I'm not gonna beat myself up if I don't. That's a lie, I definitely will, but that's a me problem. Let's just go ahead and dive in. And first things first is Surf's Up, which is to read a book with a body of water on the cover. For this one, I have chosen The Swimmers by Juliet Tsuka. It's about a bunch of people who only know each other because they swim in the same community pool, but when a crack happens in the pool, they all sort of have to face their outside lives. And one of the main characters has dementia and she and her daughter are grappling with the fact that she's having dementia. Um, but yeah, this has a pool, which I'm counting for a body of water. Such a beautiful cover. It's also written by a woman and it's written by an Asian American woman. So this would also fit Hot Girl Summer and spice it up. And it's also under 200 pages. So it could fit for that prompt as well. My recommendations for you, if you need some recommendations for books with a body of water on the cover are as follows. One of my favorite books that I've read since starting my channel is The Prince of Tides by Pat Conroy. Now this is a chunky boy, so it might not be <laughs> the best fit for a readathon, but it's absolutely incredible. And it's so much about being from the South and how that defines you and stays with you through your whole life. It's about mental illness and grief and trauma. It has every trigger warning in the book, so please take care while reading. I genuinely thought the writing was incredible and I understand why Pat Conroy is like such a staple of Southern literature. I would also recommend Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I just read this recently and it was such a fun quick read. It's like epitome of summer vibes. You have romance in there, you have thriller elements in there. It's just compulsively readable and the ocean is the entire front cover. Then we have Roots, which is to read a childhood favorite. I'm gonna read 
one of my middle school favorites, which is Along for the Ride by Sarah Dessen. There's a new Netflix movie of it, which was so much fun to watch. And ever since I watched it, I've been wanting to reread it. So I had to choose it for this one. It takes place during only a summer. So it also fits for heat waves, another prompt coming up. It's written by a woman and it has a body of water on the cover. Plus one of the other challenges that's not book related is movie night to watch a movie set at the beach with some friends and make a fun night out of it. And this would be perfect to read and then watch the movie. And we're gonna do a fun community movie night and watch along for the ride to heal our inner child. Really just have a blast with some Sarah Dessen because that's the only thing you can do with Sarah Dessen. It's just gonna be so much fun, okay? It's just gonna be such a blast. Next up is Heat Waves. This is a book that takes place entirely in the summer. So I can recommend this one for you, but I am gonna be reading Real Life by Brandon Taylor. I don't know too much about this, except that it is set at a Midwestern university and the main character is black and queer. And I've just been told that it's so, so good. And I've been dying to read it. It's been on my shelf for forever now. This is the time. It's written by a black queer author so it fits for your pride square it fits for your spice it up square and it has yellow on the cover so it fits for that spot i'm pretty sure based on the summary that it takes place only during the summer it says but over the course of a late summer weekend that leads me to believe it takes place over only a summer right i know people have been struggling with this prompt figuring out what books are only set during the summer. So I do have some recommendations for you. I actually have a lot of recommendations for this prompt. The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath takes place primarily over a summer and has the iconic first line, it was a queer sultry summer, the summer they electrocuted the Rosenbergs and I didn't know what I was doing in New York. Highly recommend. Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid also takes place over only a summer and in fact only 24 hours in one summer. Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare takes place in one week in June. It's amazing. I'm reading it with my Shakespeare book club right now. It's great. The Sea of Monsters by Rick Riordan takes place over a summer. You might have to reread Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief first. Who doesn't want to do that? A Room with a View takes place primarily during a summer. I'm pretty sure it's only during a summer. I could be wrong, but it counts. Lord of the Flies by William Golding takes place over a summer. This is a great summer read. It's hot and sticky and brutal and it's like a classic thriller dystopia moment and it's one of my favorite books I've ever read for school. A lot of Sarah Dessen's books will fit. She's big on summer. I'm pretty sure all of Emily Henry's books take place over a summer, but I just read Book Lovers and it was fantastic, as well as People We Meet on Vacation I love so very much, and those take place during the summer. We have a buddy read. Now listen. This can be whatever you want it to be. If you look at anybody else's TBR and you see that they're reading a book and you want to read it, then boom, you have buddy read spot filled. You can read with any of your friends. You can read with one of our creators, but we also do have an official summer splash buddy read, which is I Kiss Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. We chose this book for the buddy read because it just seems to be giving sort of summery vibes. It has a romance, it has thriller elements, and to me like romance and thriller just both fit so perfectly during summer. I'm super stoked to get to this one. But yeah, most of the creators that are helping out with Summer Splash will be reading this one and we'll be sharing our thoughts and talking to you about it. So I highly recommend that you pick it up, but if this doesn't sound like something that you wanna read, you can also buddy read with whoever you want, whatever you want. This book is also queer, so it would fit for your pride spot. Next up we have Easy Breezy which is a book that's under 200 pages. I am going to be tackling Intimations by Zadie Smith which I've been wanting to get to since it came out basically. This is a series of short essays that Zadie Smith wrote about COVID and quarantine and I feel like I even though I just had COVID I feel like I'm finally removed enough from like the trenches of it, of like not having a job and being isolated at home and everything to be able to read this and not just feel incredibly hopeless. I'm super excited. This will actually be my first Sadie Smith and I have so many of her books on my TBR. So I'm excited to get to this one. But of course, I also have some recommendations for you. Dreamwork by Mary Oliver is a poetry collection, super skinny amazing poetry. Mary Oliver is probably my favorite poet. I love her so much. This poetry collection is just so nature-based and reflective. You can read it in an afternoon and I love Mary Oliver. Highly recommend. One of my favorite books of all time is The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Every time I say it I know it's wrong. Sorry. This is also a really short book and it also has beautiful beautiful illustrations that I've like thought about getting tattooed on my body so many times. It's unreal. This is one of my favorites. Like, 
oh, just stunning illustrations. It's just about how many problems we make for ourselves and how grateful we should be for like the beautiful mundanity of our everyday lives. And then I might be cheating because my copy is over 200 pages, but that's because it's a mass market paperback. And I know that there are copies out there that are under 200 pages. So uh, Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut is one of my recent absolute favorite reads. It immediately made its way onto my favorite shelf. And it's a non-linear story told through the eyes of a man with severe PTSD because he was present during the Dresden fire bombings during World War II. And it's incredibly moving. It's got sci-fi elements as well. Gosh, it's just, it's one of those books that I read and was like, I get why this is a classic and it always, always will be. I think it's so good. Next, next we have Sunny Days, which is to read a book with yellow on the cover. Now I am still deciding between three books and this will ultimately end up being based on my mood at the time. A book that has been on my shelf for absolutely ages since I think my freshman year of high school, so like nine, ten years, is Emma Who Saved My Life by Wilton Barnhart. It's about a Midwestern aspiring actor who moves to New York and he meets Emma. His life begins to spin on this axis that is Emma. Another one is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman, which is just in another room and I'm too lazy to go get it. I've seen a lot of people speak very highly about it, both on booktube and on bookstagram. And I've been just super, super itching to get to it because I've read a novella by Frederick Bachman, which was and every day the way home gets longer and longer and it was so beautiful and um, that's another really good one for easy breezy because it's like tiny and I've been wanting to read more from him and anxious people just has this bright yellow vibrant cover and that might be the one I pick up but then there's also trick mirror by Gia Tolentino and I've been wanting to read this for forever I've heard sort of mixed reviews about this but the concept sounds really interesting to me and so I think even if I don't like every single essay in this book I will definitely gain something from at least one of them. It's about literary heroines. It's about the way we're all so obsessed with self and like perception of self. It's about social media. It's just about a ton of ways in which sort of our current society are fractured and how that affects us as people. And I think that sounds super interesting. It's very yellow, like it really fits the prompt. But a couple recommendations for books with yellow on the cover. Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney, incredible show stopping. I don't need to tell you how much I love Sally Rooney. That's something that you already know. I have recently read Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell and it was so beautiful and wonderful. And I feel like this is a really good summer read. It's like, it's a historical hypothetical fiction about the lives of Shakespeare's family. Hamnet, our titular character is Shakespeare's son as he is grappling with the plague. Highly recommend. They Can't Kill Us Until They Kill Us by Hanif Abdurraqib. If there's like one book on this list that I recommend that you read during this readathon, it's probably this one. It's part memoir, part cultural analysis, part pop culture commentary, and it's one of the most amazing things that I've ever read. My highlighter was out of ink by the time that I finished this. I just can't recommend it enough. There may only be a tiny bit of yellow on the cover, but it counts and you should read it. Next, we have Pride. I'm reading at least four queer books for this, but for this prompt, I'm reading Loveless by Alice Oseman because I actually don't know if I've read any books that feature an ace made character. It has like a gay Shakespeare club in it, which is, that's all you need to get me to want to read a book. And it's Alice Oseman. So it's going to be really heartwarming. It's going to have great found family. All of these things we know to be true. If you can't tell from what I've already said, it follows a girl at Durham University in her freshman year, I believe, figuring out that she is on the asexual spectrum. I'm excited to add another Alice Oseman Cinematic Universe book to my collection. Do I have queer recommendations? Yes, I do. In fact, I just made an entire video featuring queer recommendations. So if you need help with that prompt, I got you covered in that video. Next we have Branch Out, which is to read from a genre you don't normally gravitate towards. I have been trying to decide between fantasy and sci-fi for this because I just don't read those, but I decided on sci-fi because ultimately I think I read even less sci-fi than I do fantasy. I'm like less willing to pick up sci-fi. I'm actually so stoked about this one. This is one of the ones I'm most excited about. <laughs> Oh my god, I thought it was a bug, but it's just a fuzzy. I'm gonna read The Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. Oh my god, I'm so excited. This is a sci-fi classic that was written in the 80s, 
but it's set like now. It's set in the early 2020s and it's all about the climate crisis. If there's one thing that can get me interested in sci-fi, it is the climate. Also, Octavia Butler is a black author. And if anybody wants to read this as well during the month, I would love to have somebody else who's reading it to talk to about it because I just know I'm gonna have so many thoughts. Next, we've got Hot Girl Summer, which is just to read a book written by a woman. This one will also be a buddy read for me because I am reading it with my Scrollmates book club on my Patreon, but it's Joan Didion who's just like such a queen. So I'm gonna be reading Play It As It Lays, but also fit for the yellow on the cover prompt. Set in the 1960s in Hollywood, which gives me sort of Eve Babbitt's vibes, which I love. If I were to recommend you some books for Hot Girl Summer, I would recommend Little Women by Louise May Alcott, which is also one of my favorite books of all time ever. And it's just so wonderful. I would recommend Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde. Audre Lorde was a black lesbian feminist writer. Gosh, just one of the best to ever do it. Crying in Age Mart by Michelle Zahner is an incredible memoir about losing a loved one written by a woman. Then we have Spice It Up, which is to read a book by someone who is not white. And I have quite a few authors of color already on my TBR, but I don't have any indigenous authors. So I'm going to read Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Finally, finally, it needs to happen. It has been on my shelf for forever. So this is a nonfiction book and the subheading says it best when it says indigenous wisdom, scientific knowledge, and the teachings of plants. So it's all about plants, what we can learn from them. And it's told through the lens of indigenous teachings and wisdom. I really, really want to start reading more indigenous authors because it's just sort of a hole that has been left on the books I've been reading. So if you have any indigenous recommendations, let me know. But some recommendations I have for the spice it up category, They Can't Kill Us Until They Kill Us by Hanif Abdurki, Black author, Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner, Asian American author, In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado, Latinx author, Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde, Black author, Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson, Black author. Next we have Summer Vacation. This is a challenge to read a translated work. This way we can travel to new places but within the pages of a book. I have two written down for this. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna read yet. They are My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante, this is translated from Italian and I'm learning Italian right now. It's set in Italy in the 1950s and it follows two young girls who are best friends sort of throughout their lives. And it's the first in a series called the Neapolitan novels. I don't know, Italy just feels very summery to me. But the other option I have is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. And this is translated from the Japanese. It's set in a coffee shop in Tokyo. And basically when you go into the coffee shop and you buy a cup of coffee, you can travel back in time to like any moment in your life you just have to be back before the coffee gets cold so it's like short stories that all revolve around that concept sounds amazing translated from the japanese very excited about both of those options and i don't know which one i'll choose if i had to recommend one book for a translated work it would be lonely castle in the mirror because oh my gosh i read that a couple months ago and i cannot stop thinking about it it's so incredible i read it because it's Ali's favorite book. I see why it's so good. It's translated from the Japanese and it features a lot of themes that a lot of Japanese literature sort of focuses on. So I feel like it's a good way in. Next, we have Sandcastle, which is to read a book featuring royalty. This one has proven difficult. I don't tend towards genres that heavily feature royalty. Like historical fiction is not usually my bag. Fantasy, not usually my bag. I have decided to go for a recommendation from Ali from Allison Pages and I'm going to read The Poppy War because this features an emperor and like that's royalty, right? That counts. Absolutely. Which is also going to be a branch out for me because I don't usually read fantasy and I really don't usually read like political fantasy because our political systems are already hard enough to understand and I majored in political science. I'm excited. I've heard quite a few people say that they don't normally reach for fantasy but they really liked The Poppy War. It's on hold at the library. Books that feature royalty. I don't have a ton of recommendations but I definitely recommend Red, White, and Royal Blue. Uh, so good. I really really love that one. There are lots of Shakespeare plays that feature royalty but if I had to recommend one it would be King Lear, one of my favorites and 
our titular character is a king but you can also fill the spot with things like prom queen so our buddy reed i could share wheeler would count so would you should see me in a crown which is such a fun ya sapphic romance highly recommend anything like that you can totally get creative and last but not least is the share the love square which is the prompt to read somebody else's favorite book the one that felt super summery to me and that i've seen so much recently is clara and the sun by kazuo ishiguru this is one of annie's favorite books over at annie's little library on instagram and i love annie and her reviews literally make me want to read every book that she's ever read this is just the one that stands out the most to me in my mind so i texted annie and i was like does this count as one of your favorite books and she said yes and i said hell yeah so i'm reading this i have no idea what this is about when i got it and then i read the synopsis and i was like hold on not what i was expecting but it's about clara who's like an artificial friend. So I think like an AI type thing. Basically she like sits on a shelf in this store and she watches all the people that come in and she's just like hoping somebody will choose her. If there is one person whose review can make me want to read a book, it's Annie. But if you want to read one of my favorite books, these are the ones I can reach. You can pause this screen and read one of these if you want to read one of my favorite books. But you can also ask anybody. If you want to see what our creator's favorite books are, that's over on the Instagram to help you out. I will be weekly vlogging on my YouTube channel as well as taking you along with me as I do these challenges and read over on the Instagram. We're gonna have Instagram takeovers from our creators. We're gonna have live streams, movie nights, a scavenger hunt, Instagram challenges. It's gonna be so much fun. Let me know if you are reading any of the same books that I am because I will absolutely talk to you about them. We also have a Discord for the readathon so that we can all talk and be in community together and that will be linked down below. Everything will be linked down below. If you want to support me and the channel, you can join my Patreon for just $2. You can join our Scrollmates book club where next month we're reading Play It As It Lays and our Shakespeare book club in addition to just being a part of the most amazing Discord community ever. Like this video if you're participating in summer splash comment down below and tell me which prompt you're most excited for uh subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on more summer splash content and in case you haven't heard it today i love you <laughs>